Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassan Sabbath Fellowship at 1631 Ford Parkway, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55116. We're right down by the airport. We're convenient for all of the Metro Twin Cities area. And so if you'd like to visit us sometime based on our videos, or if you'd like to write us a letter, um, you can hit our website, which is bethhassad.sf.org. Or contact us in other ways. Uh, our phone number is 612-315-6778. I introduce eschatology to you, um, but during the week when we when we meet on Sabbath from 11:30 until sunset, we talk Torah. We're Sabbatarians, and so we go through the normal Torah parsha schedule. But I do talk eschatologies during the videos, and then also late at night um, after the the Sabbath day. So keep that in mind if you'd like to visit us sometime. This is our newest video series, and I'll introduce this, but first I want to state the other video series so that you'll understand what we're doing. The first one is the Revelation series, which is chapters 1 through 22, in extensive messianic detail. My goal there in 2018 was to prove to you that John sounded just like Moses and just like Jesus. All three of them sound exactly the same. So the two witnesses, when they show up in chapter 11 of Revelation, they will sound just like Moses, just like John, just like Jesus, and they will be preaching Torah. And so the words are there. If you study the Greek and understand how it comes back through the Septuagint into the Hebrew, it is a very messianic message. Then our next series is the topical weekly series that's new, newsworthy insights every Sunday night. So every Sunday night, I don't give you blah, 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 another video, just, you know, every five minutes I'm out with a new video because I don't want to be a talking head. I'd rather wait, ponder, pray, and come up with something very interesting that you wouldn't think about normally. And so those are every Sunday night, you get a newsy type of a story that will give you a prophetic insight that you had never considered before. Then the third series, which is what we're introducing here, and this is our first video of this series, is the Biblical Historic and Prophetic Series. Um, it's Patterns Research, and it's Patterns after this gentleman, Isaac Newton, who studied math and physics. He was the smartest man probably to ever, ever lived, other than Yeshua. Um, and so uh, he was a math physics major. And then at the end of his life, he studied eschatology like I do. And he did patterns research. So we're using some of the techniques that he used many, many years ago. Think about how long ago 1643 to 1727 is. Anyway, so I love Newton. I love how he studied. And you don't know this, but my father was a tremendous pastor. But before that, he was a math physics major. He was almost a 4.0 brilliant man. Um, and so he went into the ministry. He was a famous pastor. Not really. No, <laughs> he was very wonderful, but he was just God's servant. And so he didn't make any money off it, but he did an excellent job. And Isaac Newton, he's famous, but maybe more as a math physics man. But I, I love the fact that he studied eschatology, which is what I do. The main thing is God works amongst quadrillions and billions and trillions of time frames resembling patterns created and monitored to bring his people to repentance. That's what he wants from you. He wants your love and repentance. Some are noticeable and verifiable, and that's what I study. What can you see? What can be observed? And some are personal and private. So if I'm talking to you about um, uh, charismata, which is speaking in tongues and other gifts like that, sometimes it's just a personal message to you. And sometimes, you know, everybody's blah, blah, blah in at a church, and really it's more of a private message. Sometimes it is public. But the main thing is I want to study things that everyone can see and verify. You have complete free will to determine your outcome, heaven or hell, based on divine plans and time frames. Your repentance may bring an end to judgment for you personally for the sins of your life, but they may not change God's plans concerning the nations and the world. There is a final judgment, and it will occur when it occurs. Now, Jesus can request that it's delayed, and that's what I think we're experiencing right now in 2019, is a little delay. There are ebbs and flows and things like that, but then there are delays, and, and, and Jesus has that right, he is divine, to request that. So everything is accountable in God's dominion other than God. And so if there is a delay right now, just get used to it. It's not the end of the world. All of this is eschatology. Everything that I do, uh, and everything that uh, that you want uh, for you, Jesus returning, is an eschatological viewpoint. There are the amillennials. We call them the Roman Catholics. We call them the Lutherans. Luther never really wrote on eschatology at all, and he really wasn't interested in it. They're all millennialists. That means that we're in the millennium right now. This means this is as good as it can get. This is like having Jesus here, because we have God's Spirit. 
It's not, you know that. And that's why most people, most people are a millennial because there's so many Catholics and Lutherans out there, but really most people, when they would look at it more closely and read the scriptures would realize it doesn't work scripturally. Preterists, I know many brilliant preterists. Hank Hanegraaff is one of them, and I know a local pastor that's a preterist. And so that means that everything happened and was fulfilled through 70 AD. Well, it doesn't really work that way, but that's fine. I mean, it's a start. At least they're seeing some patterns. There are post-millennialists and pre-millennialists. I'm pre-millennial. That means the Yeshua returns, and we govern with him during those thousand years after that. And so the post-millennials, whatever. <laughs> okay, there are three different viewpoints of when he returns. There's mid-trib, there's pre-trib, there's post-trib. I'm a post-tribber. And according to this chart, I'm an allegorical person, I'm not a literal person. I'm not a fundamentalist, but yet I am a fundamentalist. So this chart doesn't really work in terms of hermeneutics. But this is somebody's viewpoint of this. So they would believe the pre-trib is the only way to believe. The problem is it's not scriptural. Mid-trib is at least a start on this where you're starting to think about it. Post-trib is really the only one that can be backed up scripturally. And so we would be the most literal based on the Bible. Um, but we don't get to write the definitions because we're the smallest of the groups. This is what kicks it all off. They're on the Mount of Olives. They're having a private discussion. And they ask Jesus, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that you are coming and that the Olam Haze, the everyday world is ending? When is the marriage supper? When are you returning? And he gives, this is a paraphrase of what he talks about. With the, before the birth comes the increasing birth pangs. So watch out. Don't let anyone fool you. You'll see false prophets performing great miracles, saying, I am the Messiah. And we're seeing it, aren't we? Expect them to lead many astray. And hearing the noise of wars, don't become frightened. The end is not yet to come. World War I wasn't the end of the world. World War II wasn't the end of the world. World War III won't be the end of the world either. Armageddon will be close to the end, very, very close. Uh, nations will fight against people, will fight against each other, nations, famines, earthquakes. They're just the beginning of the birth pangs. In Luke 21, 25, it's described more as waves, and they, ebb and they flow and birth pangs. I have a friend that told me today that when she gave birth to her kids, she would sleep between the contractions. <laughs> That's amazing. Please, if you do sleep, make sure that you have oil with you because the five virgins that didn't have oil and everyone slept of the ten virgins, the five didn't have any oil. So keep that in mind. You you can sleep, but have oil. So I like to link the, the seals to the birth pangs. And, and I cite this in terms of Joel chapter 2 and Peter quotes it. And my name is Joel Peter Blackford. So just so you're aware of that. So after this, I will pour out my spirit on all humanity. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And also on my male and female slaves. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in the sky and on the earth, blood, fire, and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. These are the signs, the birth pangs, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. How will it end? When will it end? I don't know. The patterns should help to edify you, but they really don't predict anything at all. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen in 2019 or 2020, but I know that things are magnifying now, that the birth pangs are getting larger, greater, we'll call them, and uh, that the waves are splashing harder, uh, whether they're the earth doing this, or and there's a wobble going on in the earth, or whether it's the stars that are colliding or other things like that. There are just things occurring that tell us that we're close to the end, but I don't know how to predict anything. I could study the patterns and give you an idea that may edify you and calm you down when things happen. So when is the day of the Lord? Well, however, the day of the Lord will come like a thief to the ones that don't know any better, the unbelievers. On that day, the heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will melt and disintegrate, and the earth and everything therein will be burned up. Since everything is going to be destroyed like this, what kind of people should you be? You should lead holy and godly lives as you wait for the day of God and work to hasten. Yes, hasten. That's what you should pray for. Hastening. It's coming. Even though Yeshua is asking for a delay right now, if you hasten, that means you're working to bring people into the kingdom. That day will bring on the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt from the heat. That's Second Peter 3. So when? Which time frames? Let's start out as we begin this series with the week concept. God created the heavens and the earth in this first week, six days plus the seventh, the Sabbath. So let's look at it. Day one, he made the earth, space, time, and light. Day two, atmosphere. 
three, dry land and plants, four, sun, moon, stars, five, sea and flying creatures, and then the sixth day, land animals and man. And then he rested on the seventh day. We're supposed to rest on the seventh day. If you get one thing out of all of my video series, please get the Sabbath out of that. You'll see it in Revelation. You'll see it in the New Testament. You see it throughout the Old Testament, obviously. And so keep that in mind. God wants you to keep the Sabbath. And as you try to become more holy, you should notice the Sabbath as part of that plan. It is the fourth commanded people. It is. And as you want to keep the commandments, you have to keep the fourth one, too regardless of what your pastor says. It is a commandment, and it's hard to argue against the commandments, especially since you keep all the other nine, or at least you should. So I'd like you to look at six days of creation as day one, and day two are these first 2,000 years. That's the age of the patriarchs, the age of the father, okay? Um, and so then the age of Moses, the age of the son during the day three, day four, day five, they call it the church age, uh, day six also, and then the seventh day would be the millennium. Okay, so this is interesting. It's, it's a nice chart. It's very Christian. A day is like a thousand years. Um, I don't know if I agree with it or not. It doesn't really matter. It's just something to show you this person's opinion, the fathers, the sons, and the spirit. This is what I would agree with. Abraham for 2,000 years, Torah for 2,000 years, the spirit for 2,000 years, and then the millennium. Okay, so there it is on the chart. Tohu, Vavohu, Torah, and then the Mashiach, and then the thousand years where we rule together with him. And so there's you go into one of two places at that point in time, paradise or Gehenna. So this makes more sense in terms of 6,000 years or, you know, um, the millennium on top of it. This makes more sense in my mind's eye. Let's start out then also with Enoch, so you can see that he divides it into 700 years. So he's got time frames. And let's see in Enoch, first Enoch, 93 and then 91. We'll see what his time frames are and see if, what your opinions are. So here's how he leads into this. According to what uh, that which appeared to me in the heavenly vision, and which I have known through the word of the holy angels, and have learned from the heavenly tablets. So he starts out with Adam's fall to 700 in 1st Enoch 93. And Enoch began to recount from the books and said, I was born the seventh, the son of Adam, in the first week, while judgment and righteousness still endured. Okay, that works. It does. The, those were the best of the times. Even after the fall, it was pretty good. Then things got pretty ugly up to Noah's time, and that's the second week. So after me, there shall arise in the second week great wickedness and deceit shall have sprung up and in it there shall be the first end, and in it a man, Noach, which means comfort, and his seven others, of course, shall be saved, and after it is ended a brightness, an unrighteousness rather, shall grow up, and the law shall be made for the sinners. Okay, the Torah. Interesting. So that's 700 to 1400. Okay, that still works. 1400 to 2100 from creation. And after that, the third week, at its close, a man shall be elected as the plant of righteous judgment, Abraham, yep, 1948, after creation. And his posterity, Messiah, shall become the plant of righteousness forevermore. That works. It's all within this. Okay, fine. So then 2100 to 2800, during the fourth week at its close, visions of the holy and righteous shall be seen, and the law of the Torah of Moses and all generations, and an enclosure shall be made for them. So probably the ark in this case. So that's fine. That's what occurs during the time of Moses. So this is that next 700 year time frame. It still works. Then the temple from 2800 to 3500 after creation. And after that, in the fifth week at its close, the house of glory, the temple in Jerusalem, and dominion shall be built forever. That works. All of this works so far. But remember, they wrote this probably 100 years before Yeshua. So, of course, it's, it's just history. But it does work in terms of these 700 year time frames. So from 3500 to 4200. Now, let's see how accurate they are with this, because they would have written this before the temple fell. So, and after that, in the sixth week, all who live in it shall be blinded, and they were. There is a veil over Jewish people in terms of Yeshua, but God placed the veil there to bring Gentiles in. That's basically Romans 11. And the hearts of all of them shall be godlessly forsake wisdom, and in it a man shall ascend, that's Yeshua, and at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire, that's the temple, and the whole race of those chosen root shall be dispersed. That's the Jewish diaspora. It all works so far. 
and this was written before this occurred, so obviously they were right with this. So from 4200 to 4900, Constantine, the Vatican, the Dark Ages, the, the, the Roman Catholic Church, and after that, in the seventh week, shall an apostate generation arise, and many shall be its deeds, and all of its deeds shall be apostate. And they were, they stopped the Sabbath, they kicked the Jews out of the church, they kicked uh, the, the believers out, they, there were many heresies, and, and we went into the Dark Ages. And as, at its close, shall be elected the elect righteous of the eternal plant of righteousness to receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. Okay. It's very interesting right now. Let's go from 4,900 to 5,600. And after that, there shall be another, the eighth week, that of righteousness. And a sword shall be given to it that righteous judgment shall be executed on the oppressors and the sinners shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous. And at its close, they shall acquire houses through their righteousness. And a house shall be built for the great king in glory forevermore. And all mankind shall look to the path of a rightness. Hmm, interesting. So during this time frame, you should start to see more wars and things like that. Interesting, the sword, which is war. Okay, still works, but we started to see more national wars during this time frame. Then 5,600 to 6,300. So we would be at about 6,000 right now, real close. So this is Enoch, first Enoch, 91. And after that, in the ninth week, the righteous judgment shall be revealed to the whole world, and all the works of the godless shall vanish from all the earth, and the world shall be written down for destruction. Interesting. So we're coming up to that time frame right now. And after this, in the tenth week, in the seventh part, there shall be a great eternal judgment in which he will execute vengeance against the fallen angels. I'm putting the fallen part in there. And the first heaven shall depart and pass away, and the new heaven shall appear, and all the powers of the heavens shall give sevenfold light. And after that, there will be many weeks without number forever, and all shall be in goodness and righteousness, and sin shall no more be mentioned after, forever and ever after that. So that's 6300 to after the millennium. And that's from 1st Enoch 91. It's very interesting. It could happen that way. Um, we'll see. But these are 700 year time frames. So I just wanted you to see the patterns. Let's look at another pattern. There are these thousand year time frames. So we looked at 6,000 years. We looked at 700. Now we're going to break it down into thousands. And what I'm stating is that David ruled from 1010 to 970 BC. And let's take a peek at that. So from 970 to probably Palm Sunday, a thousand years later on on 30 common era he rode a donkey that's a thousand years almost to the minute to the day to the time and everything like that so there's a thousand year gap there's probably and i can't prove this a thousand year gap from abraham to david then from david to yeshua riding on the donkey a thousand years then there's this two thousand year gap right now but but there are two thousand year gaps you know uh and and yeshua's resurrection in 30 common era to 2030 is two thousand years interesting and we're not yet to 2030 um but there's also a, a subtraction of seven years so let's just read that from ezekiel 39 those living in israel cities will go out and set fire to the weapons and use as fuel the shields the breastplates the bows arrows clubs spears they will use them for fire seven years so that they will not need to gather wood from the fields or cut down any from the forest because they will use the weapons for fire thus they will plunder those who plundered them and rob those who robbed them says Adonai Elohim. When that day comes, I will give Gog a place there in Israel for graves. That means he'll, he'll be buried in Israel. The Traveler's Valley, east of the sea, and it will block the Traveler's Passage. There they will bury Gog and all his horde, and they will rename it the Valley of Haman Gog, the Horde of Gog, and it will take the house of Israel seven months to bury them in order to cleanse the land. So there are these thousand year time frames. I'm saying from Abraham, to David, it seems like a thousand years in terms of sacrificing his almost Isaac to David dying, and then Yeshua riding on the donkey seems to be thousand, thousand, thousand. And now we're looking at 2030. So there are these other gaps in there too. There are 2,000 year gaps and then thousand year gaps. Let's look at it a different way. This is someone else's perspective on it, where we can break it down into almost 500 year gaps. So once again, 970 to 30 common era when it is Palm Sunday is a thousand years. But in this case, he's saying Moses at about 1500, David at a thousand, then the prophets at about 500, and then Yeshua, there it is um, at, at about 348 AD actually, then 500, then a thousand, then 1500, then 2000, and it's more running time after that. It's, it's an interesting chart. It, it, it's his opinion. Um, he's trying to do other numbers that match up with things. And so um, 
1948 AD is when Israel becomes a nation. 1948 from creation seems to be when Abraham was born. It's all very, very interesting. Let's look at this gap one more time from 2 Peter 3, this 30 AD or common era to 2030, 40 weeks. And, and keep this in mind. This is like births in terms of if you're going to divide 40 weeks by the Jubilee, we call it 50 year cycle, you would get 2000 years, which is very, very interesting in terms of time frames and births. So it is by that same word that the present heavens and earth having been preserved are being kept for fire until the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. Moreover, dear friends, do not ignore this with the Lord. One day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow. <laughs> he is patient though <laughs> in keeping his promise as some people think of slowness. On the contrary, he is patient. He's very, very patient. And Yeshua is patient too. For it is not his purpose that anyone should be destroyed, but that everyone should turn from his sins. God is patient because he's trying to work hard to get people to repent right now during these end days. And unfortunately, what we've seen recently in 2019 is this time when you should be repenting, people are doubling down and aborting live babies. Instead of just aborting uh, very young children, they are aborting babies that are potentially born. So they, they're they liberalizing the abortion law so far out that it's, it's frightening right now. It's disgusting. Let's look at another pattern. We're breaking it down from 2,000 years or 6,000 years down to 2,000 years down to 1,000 years down to the seventh day. Let's, let's break it down to this level, the Sabbath, and let's see what's going on from creation. The seventh day is rest, and, and I am a Sabbatarian, and our fellowship is Sabbatarian, and there's a joy in Sabbath. So keep that in mind, and it's all throughout the Bible and the New Testament, too. The seventh day. Remember the seventh day of the Shabbat and set it apart for God. You shall have six days to labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. On it, you are not to do any work of any kind, not you, your son, your daughter, not your male, your female slave, not your livestock, and not the foreigner staying with you inside the gates of your property. For in six days, Adonai made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. This is why Adonai blessed the day of the Shabbat and separated it for himself. And there are many, many, many other verses that talk about this. So there's a seven year pattern. And so there's a seven year pattern based on the Shabbat cycle. So that's the Shemitah. And you've heard of Jonathan Consul we'll discuss that. Tell the people of Israel, when you enter the land, I am giving you the land itself is to observe a Sabbath rest for Adonai. Six years you shall sow, six years you shall prune and gather in your produce. But on the seventh year, it is to be a Shabbat of complete rest for the land, a Shabbat for Adonai. You will neither sow your field nor prune your grapevines. And that's Leviticus 25. So we will see that occur in the end times. Now, Jonathan Kahn does a marvelous job of talking about the Shemitah. And so would anybody be even talking about it if he didn't bring it up? The problem is he's a 49er instead of a 50 year person on the Jubilee. So you're supposed to have these seven sevens of the Shemitah years. But what about the 50th year? Well, he kind of gets confusing at that point in time. So bless him for bringing up the concept, but let's try to refine it more by looking at the Jubilee year and taking a risk and trying to place it someplace. So let's look at Shemitah cycles. This is unemployment rates. Seven years, they tend to go. So if you look at the vertical yellow columns on this page, you will see about, you'll see seven years between each one. And then what you'll see is these trends that seem to match up with unemployment. They go up, they go down, and they match up with seven year cycles in most cases. It's very interesting. This is from my buddy Keith, and Keith gave this to me a few years ago. He never really finished it out through 2022, but what these are is sine waves. And so these are economic waves, and you see them based on, uh, he's an electrical engineer, and so he did sine waves. And, and he said, this should be occurring this way, this way, this way, and these are the trends. Now, the problem is the trends should be going down right now, but they're just printing fake dollars. And so unfortunately, what you're noticing is that we're fighting against a, a sine wave that should be occurring right now. We should be going downhill dramatically, but we're not. And when we do go downhill, it's going to be horrible. So this is from 1890 to 2002. But, but if you look and you if you took the chart down through 2022, you would see it would go down dramatically. The Jubilee year, you are to count seven Sabbaths of years, seven times seven years. That is 49 years. Then on the 10th day of the seventh month, on Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year, you are to sound a blast of the shofar. 
you are to sound the shofar all throughout your land, and you are to consecrate the 50th year, not the 49th, the 50th. And it works best if you do that. And we do this every year anyway when we celebrate Shavuot. That is the 50th day, just like the 50th year. Proclaiming freedom throughout the land to all its inhabitants, it will be a yovel, a jubilee for you, and you will return everyone to the land he owns. So the Shemitah, you return the slaves. So you, you indentured uh, them for seven years, and then you release them and give them gifts, and you bless them as they leave. Or they could stay with you, but then you have to pay them. And so um, if somebody came to America, you could indenture them for seven years and then let them go and give them gifts. Uh, well, no one really did that, though. Um, we're not sure that they ever kept the Shemitah, let alone the Jubilee, but the land is returned. And it, it is God's land. So sometimes you'll think of it in terms of returning to the people of that family, of that tribe, so to speak. But sometimes it's returned to God. So in the end times, keep that in mind that it will be a Yovel and you will return everyone to the land he owns and God owns it. And everyone is to return to his family. So when is it? The 49th or the 50th year? Many scholars agree and disagree. I believe it's the 50th year. That is the end of the first series. We'll come up with the second series in just a minute here. So please stay with me. I think you'll enjoy these patterns and you'll enjoy the historical nature.